300,000 people killed in Indonesia during the last 16 months are about 100,000 more than the total military casualties of all sides in Vietnam since 1960. In many cases, entire families were liquidated. But still there are thousands of widows like this young mother. Without trial, her husband and 300 other alleged communists were shot by the army and dumped into this mass grave. 50,000 in all were killed just on the romantic island of Bali. A young college professor named Rata, who helped remove the communists, explained how they went about it. Bali is such a beautiful island. The people are so attractive, the climate's so lovely. It's hard to believe that so many unpleasant things went on here in the last year. Yeah, but now Bali become more beautiful without communists. And this is the duty of the Balinese people to clean their own island from the communist influence. This is the holy duty. And we did it. In Bali, it's really, we did it. What actually happened here in this village? Yeah, the story here is because some of the communist leaders from this village realized that they're wrong already. And they come to the village council and ask to the village council when the village council will clean their village from the communist people. You mean the communists themselves ask to be killed? Some of them. And then the village council make a list who must be killed from that village. And some of them want to be killed, but they ask a time, for example, if you want to kill me, you can kill me the next day. And now give me a chance to pray to the temple, to the village temple, to say goodbye to all of my relatives, and the next morning I'm ready to be killed. So the next morning or next evening, the, pages, the villagers bring him here and then kill him by sword. They and killed him with a sword? Yes. With just sword, stab them one time and they killed buried it in, and put it the stone like this one so the family can recognize the next morning where is the family buried what did you do to erase or cleanse the communists or the communist sympathizers in your village from their ideas yeah and later all the communists for example come to the village council and then they told that they will swear on earth they will not become a member or sympathizer of Communist Party anymore. Well, how did you hold them to their promise? That is why we cannot hold that. That is why we leave it to the God and we decided to hold the purification ceremony for them in the village temple. That the God will see them promise and swear on earth. That is the best way. Because, for example, if they come back again to the Communist Party, we don't know, but the God will know it. He is notifying God that a dozen communist sympathizers are to be purified. Girls from the village enter the temple with religious offerings. The entire village attends the ceremony. The Mangu Dalem, or temple priest, prays to the particular Hindu god in charge of political purification to forgive the surviving communists in the village and to accept their vow never to be one again. It's a bit more involved than putting your hand in the Bible and swearing to tell the truth, but the principle is the same. It's a kind of religious loyalty oath. Events in Indonesia might be a little easier to understand if the communists were killed just for their political beliefs and unscrupulous practices. However, their slaughter was largely a religious issue, a power struggle between communist atheism and fanatical Muslim, Hindus and Christians. The different islands deal with the communist survivors in various ways, mostly by keeping them in prison. It's estimated that today 150,000 like these are locked away without formal charges. In some camps they are starved to death or released periodically to be killed by the local citizens. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
In this Sumatran camp, the policy is to re-indoctrinate the inmates, which include women and children, in the concepts of God and state ideology. Saudara-saudara, pada hari ini kembali kita meneruskan pelajaran kita. Today we are back here to continue our lessons. Saudara-saudara, friends, recently all of you have been taken along, persuaded, ordered, and propagandized to make you disbelieve in God. Those atheists did it. Those people who do not recognize God's existence, those PKI, those communists, they tricked all of you so that you would not believe in God. Are you willing to repent? Now let's everybody chant the prayer in order to besiege God's forgiveness. Yeah? Astaghfirullah al-Azim Astaghfirullah al-Azim Al-Ladhi Al-Ladhi La ilaha illa huwa La ilaha illa huwa Wa atubu ilayh That's the Muslim way. Here's how the Christians do it. Meskipun bukan sejak semula Tuhan menjadikan kita berdosa. Although God did not create us with sins, we are all full of sins. Our behavior has been sinful ever since our great grandparents in paradise. Adam and Eve. Dan terutama basisnya ialah the foundation of our life is our relationship with God. If we are at peace with God in our hearts, then there will be peace on earth. Astaghfirullah al-Azim Astaghfirullah al-Azim Dan tuku patutlah hitolah Allahumma inni Allahumma inni Atubu ilaika minha Ya Bapak ampunilah segala dosa dan kesalahan kami dan oleh pertolongan serta persekutuan rohmu yang maha kudus. Amin. about his fair play, this concert is the example of all times. Until six months ago, most of the audience was in communist prisons or hiding from PKI goon squads. Not only was religion a point of contention, but so was intellectualism, culture, and free expression. It was banned by the PKI. Books were burnt, newspapers closed, painting, music, films not pro-communist were destroyed. Now the communists are in prison, the intellectuals are out, and they are the vanguard of the new order. One of the ex-cons is a Dutchman turned Indonesian who helped fight for their independence, was elected to their parliament, and jailed in 1962 by Sukarno for his critical views. Next to him is Mukhtar Lubis, an Indonesian hero during the fight for independence from Dutch colonial rule. He's a novelist and newspaper man who published searing exposés of corruption in the Sukarno government. PKI writing sent him away for nine years. Nine years of imprisonment without trial have only strengthened my determination to fight even harder for our cultural and intellectual freedom. 
He's fighting with his newspaper. In his first editorial, he describes the challenges and dangers already menacing the new order. There are still many challenges which we have to face to build this new order. Challenges from the communists, who, though officially banned, are still working underground by exploiting the continuing deterioration of our economy. Challenges from the corrupt old politicians, the vested interest groups, which had enriched themselves so much during the past years. But the greatest danger of all is a possible split within the forces of the new order, between the students and some elements of our armed forces.